Hey everybody, DJ Lou here, and I'm sorry, this has been a video long time in the making. We're going to talk my 2022 ceremony reception, everything under the bucket, basically everything in this trailer. Let's talk about this. This episode of Paris Creative is brought to you by Q. Yes, Q is the platform developed by an event professional for event professionals, doing everything from contracts to proposals to timelines. Be sure to check out both Q Essentials, which is free, and Q Premium, which brings all the features. All right, everybody, it is a Sunday in July, 4th of July weekend, and somehow I only had a Friday wedding. And I've been promising this video for a very long time, just covering everything that has changed with Paris Creative over the past couple of years. Last time I did a big video like this was, what, 2019. So we're gonna jump right into it, just to let you know. I actually have two cameras um, set up for this. My one um, that you see me in front here. Uh, this is my primary camera on a stick. As a matter of fact, let me go to camera number two and actually show you my camera on the stick solution. So this is a Sony ZV-1. The other camera it happens to be a ZV-1 as well. And I've put a really big, I wanna say this is like a 30,000 milliamp hour battery that I've put on this on a just standard 72 inch uh, stand, nothing super special. Um, I got a dummy uh, battery cable for this, uh, goes right in via USB. Because of the ZV-1, I can actually record unlimited time and not too many cameras do that now. There's a few, but they tend to be really expensive. These are a bargain, um, especially for basically what I would call the creator type camera. So I've got two of those. I usually only bring out this. Um, I don't always uh, you know, go through the trouble of setting up both. I used to do gig logs a lot on this, but I have found that it's just super time consuming trying to shoot gig logs all the time. So this ends up being my Instagram camera. Um, I'll shoot the entire event as much as possible. Then I'll cut it up, you know, square out my images. And yeah, this is what I use. So up next, we have my trailer. Now, if you saw my video a couple months ago, you know that my town and country that I've had for a very long time, since 2014, it just it hit its end of life. It started disintegrating with the exhaust. The brakes needed to repair again. I had already thrown a couple grand into it at the beginning of the year. So not the smartest idea in the world because of the way the economy is, but I did end up getting a 2022 Honda Passport. Finally got the tow kit on it just recently, and now I can haul my new trailer. So I want to focus briefly on security. I have the Proven Locks pucks i actually have three of them one in the front i did notice i ordered mine in orange it came a little more brassy orange than anything and i noticed one of them is already fading from the sun but it doesn't affect the performance the real you know merit to these is how really really solid the locks are i also have a front hitch lock again proven locks as well and this is my level of security to try to make sure that somebody just doesn't casually walk up and try to steal stuff out of the trailer. So I'm in the trailer now. Um, I do apologize for some of the contrasting colors and all that since I'm uh, you know, filming in a little bit of a darker area. I do have the LED strips in here um, to uh, you know, light up in here. I keep them at an orange so at nighttime it doesn't attract uh, flies merely as much, but I can change this to any color, of course. Um, thrown in the carpeting, thrown in the E-Track, um, basically also threw some E-Track on the side as well. And I will say, trying to get this all together was a huge pain in the ass. Um, it's just a lot of um, just things you never really think about uh, to get it together. You know, I'm, I'm still happy with the result, but man, it was a definite challenge for some pieces. A couple other things here. Uh, we have my battery wall, if I can focus over here really quick. Made a quick battery wall. Um, right now, really only have the lights tapped into it. I do have a couple other ideas that I would like to do uh, later on. Up here, I have my quick battery wall. I originally went with a 16 um, battery unit in here, but it was actually just too heavy for it to maintain. So I just went with two eights. Also kind of keeps it uh, cooler uh, to charge. Um, again, everything's strapped in here. The way I load things in, I do have my ceremony rig over here. I keep my Ape Labs lighting in here. Um, I have a bag of cables. I have what I call now my speaker rollout kit. This is all on the Mover 6. I have my Toadmatic and I have my DeWalt case. Now 
But I also want to note that once I've unloaded stuff, I try to keep the straps in a certain configuration because once I roll it in, I want to be able to quickly just grab the strap, bring it in. Also notice I really didn't disconnect it from both ends of the, the loop itself. And basically, you know, I'll just uh, lock it right back in into the E-Track, do a couple ratchets, done. So I want to focus now attention on my ceremony reception rig, AKA the digital box. Um, I have two of these, one inside my Toadmatic this one um, as a standalone of course this is the ceremony rig itself but i've built this in such a way that they're identical um, so that way if i ever had to swap out in case of a major issue i can easily do that now this is not the perfect solution i'm constantly refining refining trying failing refining um, if you saw a photo that i posted a few weeks ago you would have seen um, two antenna popping out here actually one over here one over here I had found some GoPro type sticks that seemed really solid and I put my, um, my shark fin on there from RF Venues, a diversity fin. Um, it gives both uh, axes uh, really, really great concentration of uh, radio signal to pick up from it. And I also had my larger Omni for my IEM. Figured it'd be a great setup and all that. Went out for one use. The antennas swayed a little bit. I knew it'd give a little bit because of the nature of the plastic and all that. There's only so much rigidity in there. By the time I got home, they had snapped off the top and found out that the base of the stick itself was unfortunately just glued on. It wasn't part of the unit directly itself. So I'm still considering some other options to do that. Automatically switched back over to the quarter waves. They've actually been tried and true. I've not had any major issues with these since I've used them many, many years ago. Um, but just a quick re-review, you can you know, go much deeper dive into some older videos I have. I still have the Sennheiser G3 mics. With the antenna splitter, I have my IEM. I do have one U of space to separate it. Um, it's not always the best idea to keep these units um, that close to each other. But with the physical separation of the antennas, careful consideration of where I put the cables inside, I'm not too worried about uh, potential bleed over of uh, you know, reception and starting to interfere with each other. I've tested these out. They go even a little bit further than my system did prior. Um, so I'm not complaining about that. But ultimately, I would like to get my fairly expensive RF venue uh, antenna and uh, Sennheiser antenna mounted in here in some uh, form or fashion. Still rocking the Soundcraft UI24R. Yes, as some people have noted, it is upside down. Um, the long story short is the UI16 and the UI12 had their masters here on the bottom and I had special cables made, shouts to Ben at NLFX uh, for you know, constantly uh, listening to my barrage of cable needs over the years. And uh, I had a nice pair of um, combination XLR and power cables uh, put together. And I basically just didn't want to change that out. So masters are still here. So it still gives me exactly where I need. I just had to flip it upside down. So a little odd, but not too odd. Still rocking a standard, just uh, you know, uh, trip light 1U PDU. A little bit of a gap in, under here. It's the nature of the design of the case. I can actually tuck some of my cables underneath here. So it kind of uh, comes in handy on the reception rig. I really don't have to do much in the way of cabling unless I'm bringing in live entertainment. And yes, I have no qualms about plugging in live entertainment whether I'm doing the full mix for them or if they're doing some type of DI and need to uh, plug into here, it's something that I can accommodate. So um, I know there's been a lot of controversies of people, you know, whether it's the live mix of other people having videographers hang off the system. I absolutely do that. And of course, with the UI 24R, I can not only do recording right directly off the unit for the entire night, I can also do multi-track recording, which um, takes all the color, EQ, um, gain, everything off of it and just flattens it out into individual files for, in this case, for ceremony. Gives me unprecedented uh, capabilities to hand over to videographers to help them with their job. And yes, I'm a firm believer that we're all a team. Um, so many times I've provided this, I got some great footage back from videographers. So, you know, take advice on that, um, if you will. But all this again inside a gator case. Um, I, I'm still hit and miss on the gator case. Uh, the SKBs were definitely a more um, hardier case, definitely a little bit more weight. Um, they're both roto plastic, 
but this, you know, it, this does. And I've really, you know, I, I want to try to keep this lightweight as heavy as this seems, as long as you pick it up from the front. It's really not that bad at all. I want to say this comes in about 45 pounds or so. The biggest issue of this is actually very front heavy. There isn't much um, in the way of the back. So carrying it, you have to uh, carry it from the front, but it's not that difficult to carry. Also on top, I've relocated my Wi-Fi up to as much clearance as possible to maximize my signal. And yes, I do use the external Wi-Fi because the internal Wi-Fi is subpar. I mean, it definitely connects, but there's just a lot of um, you know, potential issues that you can run into. This is the new setup. Um, it's not perfect. I don't think I'll ever have a perfect uh, setup by any stretch of imagination, but this combination has served me well for a very long time. Having everything in the same case gives me some very, very tidy uh, you know, cable management, which uh, from a visual perspective is always a bonus. You know, I spend a lot of time trying to cultivate a very clean uh, look uh, for all my setups and this definitely helps to address that. All right, now, before I put this back in the trailer, something I want to know of how I kind of conduct my stuff day to day and all that. So when I, uh, you know, set up for a ceremony, which is nine times out of 10, um, out of the location of where the reception area is, I do my standard setup, I'll either roll this in, um, either on its own wheels or on my mover cart. Um, I'll have a battery, of course, attached to this and I'll have my uh, DeWalt case, my wireless case, to grab anything that's necessary. Once I'm done the ceremony, I'm basically packing this away, you know, right in the midst of cocktail hour, you know, wait for everybody, of course, to move out of the, you know, the area and all that to minimize any disturbance and whatnot. But part of my speed to be able to set up and break down and all that is this constant moving of stuff you know, my, uh, my Maui speakers get moved from place to place uh, throughout the event, but I tried to tidy up and move everything back into the trailer as soon as humanly possible. Welcome to my DeWalt wireless kit. This is where I keep all my major stuff, like my handhelds, my, uh, my over the ears and my lapel mics, other extras and kits like foamies and stuff of that nature, tie downs. I also have my G3 receivers along with my IEM packs. Unfortunately, I had an IEM pack die on me. I gotta fix this one. That just happened on Saturday. And I have my batteries. Now, I have not recharged from my last event, but you'll see in this case, I have some that are up, some are down. These have already been charged and not used. These I've used and needed charging. Now I'll always top them off regardless but gives me a quick visualization of what's going on. And the top tends to be some extra cables. I actually have a Wi-Fi extender whenever I need something of that nature. Handy tape measure to make sure everything's measured out right. I also have my uh, IEM and my RF venue antennas in here. Try not to have uh, too much lay on top of them or anything, but I wanted to keep them handy. I can always put them on a microphone stand for now. And that's it. Yes, it's a little bulky. I wish there could be a slightly more efficient uh, use of space in here, but uh, this has actually uh, worked well the past year. Again, no perfect solution. I've used my cable file bags. I've used um, other Pelican type cases. All of them have their plus and minuses, but uh, this has actually served me well. And yes, I can actually you know, talk to say a photographer or videographer and if I'm in a bind, and they have a free hand, they can come and look at where to grab something and say, hey, I need some additional batteries or something. Nice, simple, and straightforward. All right, sorry for all the uh, sunlight now. I can't mess with mother nature, but this is now what I like to call my speaker cart. Um, now that I actually have three Maui 5 Go's um, and my, of course my uh, Evolve 50s, they all uh, fit better just together on the cart itself. So I throw a couple bungees on here, make sure everything doesn't slide through when I uh, secure it in the van. But this basically just gives me some easy access when I uh, wheeled in. But um, yeah, nice, simple. I love my Mover 6 cart still. Um, zero turn radius, which really helps in tight spots. And it's just a great cart overall. This is the Toadmatic, and this is one of my major investments from last year. Now, it did create a DIY booth um, that I still use time to time, but usually only for places like I have to aggress stairs or for some reason I can't roll with this. Um, has a cover over top to keep things protected. Now when I uh, roll this into the van, I do roll in TV side towards the wall. 
uh, protects that from any uh, thing that might fall inside although something shouldn't do that but hey you never know what will happen um, but try to keep this of course protected now i did notice that this cover does take a bit of abuse um, definitely rather this take the abuse than of course what the contents are inside but i probably will have to replace this cover after another year or so it's gotten almost a year of use at this point um, but this has been a tremendous investment um, a, a, additional speed of setup and strike and just an overall look that i really really love so now of course we have the rain one um, i own two of these now um, the other one is in my diy kit and i, I just can't say enough praise with this uh, the rev 7 uh, which everybody is also hot for right now in moving platters great unit got to test it out a couple times now um, i do like the feel of the one though it's just just a more purist kind of uh, a feel with this uh, just feels a little looser and I actually uh, like that in the rain one um, this is held up now for uh, quite a while so I can easily say this holds up to the standards of older rain units like the rain 62 that I still have in my basement right now that I still do vinyl stuff with but this has just been a great asset I also have a crane stand in here very simple and straightforward to set this up. I've actually had this stand for quite a while now. Um, it gets used basically from time to time. Also notice that I have my cables already pre-wired up and everything. I have a cable over here. This is for my screen, for my TV. I also have a cable over here. And this is for my uh, SSD drive. Oh, and lastly, I have my cable for my iPad. Um, again, try to pre-wire everything, try to keep everything uh, together to keep it as quick and easy to set up. Almost forgot my trusty jetpack. Uh, this has definitely been a great asset to have. I always have at least two laptops. Um, I'm back to my 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro. This is an Intel. Um, it's worked great. I was uh, about to switch to all M1s, um, but there's an inventory, of course, issue, uh, so I can't order a second one and get it in at a reasonable time. So I still have this for right now. And again all pre-cabled now do two separate cables one for power one for everything else this is if i had to go completely battery um, i'd rather not drain uh, my ups uh, which is behind me uh, from you know critical power that i'll need and laptops definitely sucks the power out of that because it's constantly charging its battery so definitely recommend if you have any type of ups and whatnot and you want to maximize that separate your power and your data. Um, I originally did a one cable solution, but thought better to save as much power as possible. And of course my SSDs, I have two of these, um, always cloned and always ready to go. And as always, a couple business cards uh, for guests to grab. And naturally if a vendor is around is interested in queue, have that card as well. So this has sparked a bit of controversy as I'm nearing the end of the event that there's no way in hell that I can get this all packed and ready to go 10 minutes out the door, 15 minutes on the road. Now, as you can see, I've built a very modular setup. I've pre-wired stuff. I'm always trying to think ahead. So I want to go over the last few bits of uh, what I do at the end of the night as my clients are dancing their last couple songs. So usually by the second to last song, I'm at least going out to my Maui 5 Goes and grabbing their receivers. Again, second to third last song, this is what I'm starting to do at this point. Now again, as you can see, that just took a few seconds and that was me fiddling with the camera as well. I usually just want to get the batteries out, the cables packed away and all that going. Again, second, maybe third last song uh, playing. 
Now we could again now be at the second or even the last song and if my vehicle isn't too far away and I know I've got a good like say four minutes or so between um, last song playing and when I need to start kind of uh, you know collapsing and getting all this stuff out here I'll go and get the passport and the trailer. Now some people might say this is sacrilege I'm not behind uh, the decks um, at this point but to be honest the crowd is into themselves at that point again I'm trying to maximize my time to get my stuff now sometimes that trailer could be much farther away and there's no way for me to do it but as an example of the last wedding I just did the van was literally you know 100 feet 150 feet away from the venue just pull right in it's a real nice roll in I want to say it's like about 50 to 60 feet uh, probably actually from the end of that um, my driveway all the way to uh, the trailer itself and that's pretty much the way I dress and this is actually why I set this up like this I want to try to mimic as close as possible of how quick I can collapse this and roll into the trailer now again every time is going to vary sometimes you have a much longer distance uh, to worry about you're going to have things like you know thinking of the couple and all that and i always do um, it's something that it's as soon as i'm down before i start collapsing i'm giving handshakes and all that and hugs uh, but the reality is i know staff is getting ready to head out i have multiple things to worry about including strikes so the last song is playing i'm going to get my van i'm getting as close as possible that i can uh, load it if at all possible um, again because everything's on wheels I can just wheel it all the way out there if I have to you know if it's a nice smooth uh, driveway and whatnot but for all intents and purposes I'm trying to minimize the distance between the trailer and my setup oh and by the way last song being played I can start to tuck away my headphones and starting to gather other things like business cards i might keep one in my pocket just to hand uh, to people if they just happen to still be interested but most of the time these go straight back into my bag basically now at the last song i'm going to say my thank yous so this is where the fun begins i'm going to set up my phone with the stopwatch on there i also have another camera off to the side so we've got two angles coming off of this I am now going to start my process of shutting all this down, collapsing it all out, grabbing my cart, tucking it all the way and moving it out. Let's see if I can do this in under 10 minutes. Normally, I would put this in my car. Let's see where we're at. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. All right, so that's it in a nutshell. I was actually surprised I got that in 10 minutes. I figured it'd be like 11 or 12. Very happy with the investments that I've made, um, the decisions I made, the pre-wiring, again, having the toad, having the trailer. All these things really help to expedite both the setup and strike. Now setups, I'm very casual. You know, I'm having conversations with people. There's a lot of things going on. I usually give myself an hour or so, but I always arrive three hours prior to the venue. You know, if I caught a flat, caught bad traffic, something drastic has happened, I want to be there to make sure I have the time to respond and do the things I need to do. Um, the reality is I can probably really set up in about 20 with full sound check. Um, 30 if I'm adding the ceremony um, and naturally there's always additional things that um, you know can be brought to bear perfect example next week I have a sub that I'm adding to it because it's a much larger room a few more people than typical plus I'm also gonna be doing lighting so I'll be adding some additional time for a setup and strike on that but what you saw is my typical setup a lot of my couples don't like lighting um, you know they like the ambiance of the venue I do a lot of farms and barns industrial style uh, places and they like the ambiance of that. I would say like 60, maybe even 70% of all my clients choose no lighting. But I've even tried to simplify my lighting options now. Now I just use my Ape Lab Maxis. You know, I do nice, uh, you know, beautiful uplighting 
for uh, the dinner portion of the day. And then when it gets to, you know, dancing, you know, I dance them out, change colors if I want. It gives me a lot of flexible options. But they're compact, they're battery, they look slick, they're not that heavy, they're quick and easy setup and strikes. And this is kind of indicative of all the investments that I make. Is it adding some value to the business? Is it adding capabilities to my business? Like my soundcraft being able to do things like recording for videographers, even myself. Every Instagram video, every gig log that you've ever seen since like gig log four or something like that, I've always overlaid the recording of the, um, of my soundcraft along with the recording of the camera. If I happen to be wearing a lapel, I'll uh, overlay that as well. I always want crispy audio and I want to deliver that for videographers to help them out. Again, this is a team effort and all that. Same thing with my toad on big wheels so I can go to those really rough and rugged places, which I definitely have a couple. I can egress and, and whatnot on uh, those surfaces. Again, pre-wiring the, the choice of you know, my speakers, my Evolve 50s. Um, you know, I used to have my Yamahas before, great speakers, but the Evolves just shed just a little bit more time and have a very, very elegant look to them. All these things are very conscious decisions on the investments that I make to make my life easier and ultimately make a better product for my clients. Well, there's a video and I really hope you liked it. If so, please make sure you hit that thumbs up, help the algorithm, comment below, share this out, it will always help. Um, and naturally, if you like this and want to see more, check out everything I have in my playlist and all the other content that I share out. Hope you really enjoyed. Stay tuned for more.